from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. We're your original social media. You're listening to Inspirational Perspective with Linnell Harris on 1690, the talk of Chicago. Listening to Inspirational Perspective. I'm your host, Linnell Harris, your very own life coach, right here on WVON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago. Inspirational Perspective on your radio is all about murdering mediocrity and living the best life possible. So, as I ask you every Sunday morning, are you living the best life? possible and this is the place to be to explore that possibility well good sunday morning everyone september 27th 2020 the last sunday of the third quarter of this year man i mean i don't know what you think about 2020 but it is definitely coming to a close. My family and I, we were out shopping yesterday. I got the first full eyewitness account that they're, they're already planning for Christmas. It's not even October yet, man. Everything's out. Everything. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so this year it's coming to a close question is how will you close it how will you close it well um man i hope that today's topic gives you the opportunity to close it powerfully because this morning we're going to be talking about three things in particular that one ultimately provide an essential step in our in our personal development so this is part seven of an eight-part series so we're just about complete and more than anything have a lot to do with who it is that we are and and how we create in this life those three things confidence faith and belief and I'm not talking about confidence in somebody else, faith in somebody else, belief in somebody else. I'm not talking about confidence in something else, belief in something else, and faith in something else. You can hear that later from your pastor or your mosque leader, whomever, right? What I'm talking about is confidence in yourself, belief in yourself and faith that you can do it and this is the six the sixth step to personal development you gotta believe you know everything that we've talked about up to this point you can you can uh, do it right right so you can create your life's vision oh this is what I'm going to do this is what I'm going to create you can work and, and create high levels of self-discipline, although discipline, we're going to talk about discipline a little bit, but discipline in many ways, there's got to be some level of belief. Like, I'm doing this because, and so that would break down. But, you know, you can have some level of self-discipline. 
You can be incredibly self-motivated, although I, you know, that takes some confidence. Man, you you could be one of the most curious people on the planet. That was number four. The power of curiosity and learning. You can have the best mentors and the best coaches, but if you don't believe, if you don't believe you can, well, simply put, you won't. And I really want to dive into what confidence, belief, and faith mean in, in, in probably a different way than what you've heard it before. Because, I, you know, in coaching and, and working with people, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. One of the things that I've, I've seen more often than not is a lack of confidence get in the way of a person's ability to create. Everything else is on the table. Lack of confidence is, is basically negating all of it. Or a lack of belief. I don't know. I, I don't really believe I can do this. I can do it. And a misunderstanding of what faith really is. A misunderstanding of what faith really is. So I, I want to tackle this and probably in ways that you haven't heard it quite before. Now, if you listen to me on a regular basis, you may have heard some of it, but different. Now, let's start with this. As human beings, we're hardwired for survival. We're hardwired for mediocrity and for instant pleasure. And so what this means is that we are not in the habit of looking for ways to live to our full potential. Let me, let me give you an example of what I mean. Right now, those of you who are listening, you're going to, you're going to have to compete with this notion of instant gratification somewhere else. Maybe in the next minute, maybe in the next 30 minutes, maybe in the next hour. In terms of, do I continue to listen or do I do something that will fire off a dopamine and give me some instant gratification? Because here's the thing about personal development. Personal development is a process. And that process requires discipline. And the goal, the dopamine hit, is on the other side of the goal. This is why, you know, I saw somebody's post. They're like, hey, man, why whenever I post something ratchet and crazy, I get so many likes but then I put something out there on, you know, personal development or or to build people up and it's, there's no likes. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's part of how human psychology works. And we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about our hormones. Like I said, you haven't heard this kind of conversation around faith, belief and 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 and, and uh, confidence before. Now, here we are. We're hardwired for survival, mediocrity and instant pleasure. Instant pleasure, right? Like I said, that's what's going to be fighting you this entire time. Some of you. And we're not in the habit of living to our full potential, which means we're not in the habit of doing things, taking on task, taking action that will take us to the next level. What we're in the habit of living, how we're in the habit of living is before is below our optimal level, well below our optimal level. William James, he says this, he says the human individual usually lives far beneath his limits. He possesses powers of various sorts, which he habitually fails to use. He energizes below his maximum and he behaves below his optimum. While in the rest of us, it is only inveterate habit the habit of infi inferiority to our full self, that is bad. Now think about that. The habit of inferiority. The habit, like just let, like, like let that sink in. That as human beings are, in, in, in many ways, the default mode, if you're not careful, the setting that you will end up on by default, if you're not intentional, 
if you're not aware, is a mode where you are in the habit of inferiority. The habit of inferiority. Now, when I hear this from William James, I have to agree. You might be like, wow, well, Linnell, that's heavy. Well, I've been coaching now for a little under a decade. I've worked with hundreds of people from all types of different backgrounds. And there's one constant in terms of the lens that we use to view the world, our cognitive distortions. In other words, another way of saying that is our mental illusion. And what I find is almost every client I work with, including myself, has a mental illusion that they are not enough. One of the things I had to overcome, and I still fight. Man, are you enough? Like, can you really do this? Like, and it's just kind of like a default setting, a default setting in our, in our mental talk, negative mental talk. It's a default setting in our thinking. Are you enough? Can you do enough? Really? Do you, do you have what it takes? And in this default setting, in many ways, is like a rust that's corroding our confidence. And if you're not aware that it's there, over time, nothing will be left. And that's what I want to talk about today. I, man, there are a lot of ways I can open this. And when I thought about it, I was like, you know, well, you're a coach. What do coaches do? Coaches ask questions. And so that's what I want to do. I, I, I want to. I want to ask a few questions this morning to get us started. So hopefully you have your journals out, your pen out. And the first question I want you to write down and begin to think about is, what's your limit? Like what? And, and, and when I ask that question, you know, notice I just talked about the default setting for inferiority. Right. So notice what that default setting says. And then I want you to get present to your true power. Present to your greatness, present to the fact that you're made in the image of God. And then ask yourself again, what's your limit? What's my limit? Another question, another way of thinking about your potential is in the vast scheme of what you could create, of what you could do. Where would you draw the line? Where would you draw the line? Right now. If, if, if you could live the life you intend to live and go as far as you could go, where would you, where would you, not anybody else, nobody else saying what you can and cannot do, where would you draw the line? Where would you say, well, well that's far enough. That's, you know, that's about, that's, that seems about right in terms of what I could create and what I could do. Where would you draw the line? See, because this, what we're getting underneath is a different level of self-awareness around your confidence, your faith. And your belief. What about this? What about this? What belief do you have that would have you instantaneously change your career? What belief do you have right now that if for some reason something ran up against that belief, instantaneously, pow, you would, you would change your entire career? Think about that, right? Now, why did I go for career? Because, man, when you talk about work, that is linked directly to our survival. What would, what would have you just change it out of nowhere? Because something ran up against a belief, a deep belief. Like, what do you believe? What do you believe in terms of things? What do you believe about yourself? And then what about this one? What belief do you hold? That could change your entire life. Like this belief, like when you when, when it's triggered, boom, it can change everything where you live, how you think, what you eat. I mean, the whole nine. Now, here's the last one. Well, somewhat, I got a few more, but this the last one in terms of this line of questioning. What is the moment that you will be heard by you? Like, think about that. What is the moment 
that you will be heard by you. Like that moment when your dreams, your aspirations are actually truly heard. Download it to a, a part of your soul and your spirit where you're like, okay, this, this right here is my priority. When is the moment that you will be heard by you? Now, these questions, I mean, man, you, you know, I don't expect you to answer them right now in the moment. That's why I want you to write them down. And my prayer, my hope is that by the end of, of this show, by the end of this show, that you will look at these questions differently and maybe you will answer these questions differently. And even the, the fuel and the knowledge you have about the the idea of confidence faith and belief will shift and influence how those questions are answered now to get into the next part i have another question what is courage what is courage now i'm gonna answer this one because what i believe is that courage is the extent to which you believe something and are willing to take action as a result, right? Like, let, let me, courage is the extent to which I believe something. And because of that belief, because of how deeply seated that belief is, I'm willing to go all in. I'm willing to put everything on the line and take action as a result of that belief. So then, I guess the next question is, do you have the courage to believe in you? See, because here's the thing. A lot of people, when I came on, I said, oh, today I'm talking about confidence, belief, and faith. They probably like, ah, yeah, I got that. Oh, hold up now. Let's, let's, let's really take a look. Because if you got it, like, are you willing to go all in, like all in on you and what you believe and who it is that you believe you can be? Like, stop what you're doing over here and do whatever it takes to get over there, because that's what you said you would do. Like, are you willing to put yourself on the line that way and take action? Do you really believe? See, here's, here's the thing. The very framework of our being as human beings is cycled and connected to help us deepen our, to deepen our confidence and faith. That is, if we allow it to operate properly. And the problem is, we live in a world now where it's been thrown off. You might say, well, Linnell, what do you mean by that it's been thrown off? Well, let me let me dive a little deeper. Let's just take a look, look at the hormones in our body and how they operate and align with one another to ensure our success if we allow it. See, because there was a time where you couldn't get a dopamine hit from a cell phone. All right, let's think about this. See, a lot of us are real distracted. We don't even know it. Because you might say, well, Linnell, what's dopamine? Dopamine is that hormone that makes you feel good in the moment. Makes you, you know, it just makes you feel good. By the way, this is why people take drugs. Dopamine. Get a dopamine hit. Man, I just need to feel better. Right? But see, there was a time where you, know, you couldn't put out a laptop and get a dopamine hit. Like, I want to see who, who liked my picture. That's a dopamine hit. Oh. You know? Because why? You, you, you put the picture out there for likes, didn't you? Maybe you say, well, I want to get a message out. But you still want to be, in some ways, you know, reassured that people understand what it is that you're saying. Me included. Right? So then when you see it, they, oh, yeah, they get it. Dopamine hit. Dopamine. Goal, goal achieved. Goal achieved. The activities I'm doing are worthwhile. You know, a thousand years ago, you didn't get a dopamine hit until you saw the little sprout come out the ground after a few weeks. 
Plant the seed. Wait. You have to wait for that dopamine hit. And then all of a sudden you see the seed, you go, oh, yes. Oh. Right? There's a different level of patience in the process. Now we want to transform our lives overnight like we microwave things. Why does it? Why isn't it working? Where's your belief? So check this out. I want to talk about four hormones, right? Yes, four hormone hormones to really get underneath this, this conversation around confidence, faith, and belief. Now, when we think about our hormones, they're there for a reason. Like endorphins, they come from self-care and physical activity, right? Some of you all who are addicted to working out or you don't feel like for me, I mean, if I don't work out, I feel off, right? Well, that's because my body is used to a certain level of endorphin hit, <laughs> right? So it's like, hey, physical activity, physical activity, physical activity. You need to do something, man. Self-care, physical activity drive, you know, comes from endorphins come from that, right? Make you feel a certain kind of way. Now, here's the thing. I believe there are fewer people setting goals, like really intentional goals, because dopamine comes from goal setting and achieving goals. But now I can set these micro instantaneous goals and get instantaneous hits. Social media. Man, I mean, you just cell phone. Phone calls, text messages, like constant, like constant dopamine hits for not really accomplishing something, let's say, in particularly worthwhile for you. Like in the long run, in terms of who you be. But dopamines, you know, they come from engaging in purposeful living and activities, right? So our ancestors, they got their dopamines from purposeful living. I'm the farmer in the village. And if I grow these crops properly, everybody will eat. Thus, we have so many fall celebrations, right? Because the dopamine hit, like, man, we got to celebrate. Now, serotonin comes from recognition, confidence, leadership. And, and this is the one I, I'm going to tell you in some places I think is off. Why is that? Because I would say today leaders are probably the most under acknowledged folk that we have around. Right. So they're putting out what they can put out, but not much serotonin coming back. And then what happens is that begins to erode your confidence if you're relying on external sources. This is why I teach my clients that you got to celebrate, man. You got to celebrate. You got you to gotta give yourself recognition for when you do things right. Because it's not like an employee is going to walk in the office and say, hey, boss, I really, I really appreciate you. Man, you know, I, I really do. I know you're working really hard and um, often no one comes and, and says thank you And I, I just want to thank you for who you be as a leader today that, that, You know, that doesn't happen often Very few are even willing to do that But oh, let the boss do something wrong I can't believe, you know, man, you should have known better So serotonin comes from recognition Relationship with self and others, confidence, leadership And then oxytonin That comes from giving back that comes from giving back. So this is how we're wired in, as social animals, right? To interact with one another and also interact with ourselves. So in a, another way of thinking about this is oxytonin equals connection. Dopamine equals creativity, right? Because when I, like, here's the thing. When I achieve a goal and I get that hit, there's an opportunity you want more, right? This is why social media is addictive. You want more. Or another way, you can say, well, well, how do I get addicted to my goals, right? Because then all of a sudden, I, I accomplish a goal, you want more. Wait a second. I knocked that health and well-being goal out the park. I wonder if I can create something similar in my finances, right? It's a different conversation. Then you get creative. You start creating ways to do it, right? Dopamine equals creativity. Serotonin equals confidence. 
So another way to think about, about this or another insight to set the stage for today's lesson is talk about serotonin equals confidence. Well, confidence without challenge creates complacency. Think about that. Confidence. So I'm confident, but when's the last time you've been truly challenged? You got a lot of people who are confident. And, and the reason it creates complacency is because, you know, that muscle begins to weaken if you're not putting yourself in those situations where you're constantly pushing. You're challenged. That confidence is challenged. What do I mean by confidence challenge? Like stepping outside your comfort zone. But what happens is a lot of us, we want to be comfortable. And what happens with that comfort, it drives complacency. And then when a real challenge shows up, we don't have the muscles to contend. So if confidence without challenge creates complacency, fear is the absence of faith. Fear is the absence of faith. And today what I want to talk about is how do we deepen our confidence belief and faith how do we deepen our confidence belief and faith all right two more questions and then we're going to really get into the content what are your soul convicting values and beliefs let me say that again what are your soul convicting values and beliefs. I mean, these are things that, man, when when they come up for you, like it, it just creates a different level of connection, arousal, motivation, inspiration. So convicting values and beliefs. And when was the last time those beliefs were challenged, or even allowed them to be a challenge? Here's the next question. How does a person really gain insight into their potential and possibilities? Like, how do you how do you really, really gain insight? Like full insight into your personal potential and your true possibilities, because let's be clear. Most of us, James, you know, William James said it talked about it earlier but most of us are living well beneath well beneath our full potential and below our optimal levels so just look at how you're living right now and the majority of us another way of saying it is you know not to be not to to drive any level of discontent right i believe in being grateful for what we have and grateful for who we are and what we have achieved and acknowledging that but me included consider there's more available there's more available much more available what is your true potential what are the true possibilities the true deep possibilities that you could create in your life i want to give you an example of what i mean to to really begin to bring color to this Last week, I talked about Frederick Douglass. Here's a, an example of someone really, truly tapping into their potential, pushing the boundaries. Frederick Douglass was born a slave. However, he died a social reformer, abolitionist, order, well-known order, an author, and a statesman. And he is also one of the most well-known African-Americans of the 19th century across the globe. Frederick Douglass set the stage for the presidential victory of Abraham Lincoln. And did so much more. How is that possible? I mean, he was born a slave. How is that possible? Did he get lucky? 
Did things just work out in his favor? How does that happen? Like what, what, what were the things, what were the chain of events that led to his success? Could have been a deep level of belief and faith that his current state, state wasn't the potential that he could be. Could, could that be? I mean, is that part of the formula? Could it, could it be that, that maybe Frederick Douglass had a, despite his, his state in life, despite his, his place, that he had a deep confidence that he could be more? Is, is that how he did it? I, I would venture to say that that's probably it. That here's a man who's born a slave, born degraded, born told because of the color of your skin, you are not enough. Somewhere inside his soul, there's this deep sense of confidence. There's a belief that he can be more. There's a faith that he's willing to act on with courage. One of my favorite quotes, Frederick Douglass. I prayed for 20 years, no answers, until I prayed with my legs. See, praying with your legs takes courage. That's the real act of faith right there. A lot of folks praying, talking about, I got faith. Oh, sister, you just caught me praying. It's asking the Lord to deliver me, take me to another level. Oh, is that right? Yes. Mm, keep practicing faith, sis. Nah, that's not faith. That's prayer. That's prayer. It's a difference. She's going to practice faith. She's going to have to act on what she's asking for. She's going to have to act on it. That's the difference. That's the big difference. How about a, how about a, will, a real woman of action? Harriet Tubman. This one, man. You know, Frederick Douglass and Harriet, man, I, I look at their lives and um, I just often I'm, I just am like, wow, where are you, bro? <laughs> where are you? OK. Think about Harriet Tubman. The courage to escape slavery. Right. So to act on that, both her and Frederick Douglass, the courage to act on that. Right, because here's the thing, the evidence shows that it's not a good decision to run. Right now, somebody is thinking, hey, I'm ready to pursue my purpose and leave my job. But the evidence shows that's not a good decision in this economy. That's not a good decision. You know, folks who run, they get the, the, the toes chopped off. They get beat. You know, folks who leave their jobs in bad economies, you know, they, they lose a lot of money. They end up on welfare. You know, it, you know, the evidence shows that's not a good decision. How much courage do you have? Do you really, really believe? How many of us would escape hell and then go back for our brothers and sisters because we believe we can? We believe it to the sore of our being. I mean, to the, to the very core of our being. You believe it. No education. Couldn't even read Harriet Tubman. Couldn't read the signs. No superhero strength. Just courage. Faith and determination. God, give me some of that. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> all right you like Linnell man you all back in the 19th century bro times are different now okay let's, let's come a little closer what about brother Ali brother Muhammad Ali what about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. what about our good brother Malcolm X I mean see these are people we look up to but do you really want to live like that
Dr. Martin Luther King said, no one really knows why they're alive until they know what they would die for. See, maybe part of the part of the problem is we don't know what we would die for. Like if we begin to dissect the lives of these extraordinary human beings. Frederick Douglass is willing to die for freedom. What are you willing to die for? See, there, there's a reason why they accomplish what they accomplish because they were willing to die for it. Harriet Tubman was willing to die to free more slaves. What are you willing to die for? See, because when you start to tap into that, then, you know, a little suffering, you know, a little, a little suffering doesn't really matter to you because there's a deeper sense of meaning, of purpose that's fueled by a different level of fire and faith. What would you die for? Ali said, he who was not courageous enough to take risk will accomplish nothing in life. Nothing. Then he went on to say, there's another quote. He said, I hated every minute of training. But I said, don't quit. Here's the faith statement, right? He, see, the training was the challenge for him. Then here's the faith statement. Don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. See, he was taking action in training because he believed he could be a champion. Faith and confidence. And another quote by Muhammad Ali I love is, I am the greatest. I said that before I knew I was. A declaration of faith, confidence, and belief. All right, you're like, well, Linnell, man, you know, you're getting close with Muhammad Ali. Give me somebody else, man. All right, what about Maya Angelou? Maya Angelou said, without courage, we cannot practice any other virtue with consistency. We cannot be kind, true, merciful, generous, or honest if courage is not present. So here's the reason why, I mean, here's the thing. I can launch into this whole conversation about faith, belief, and confidence. But it means nothing if we don't talk about courage. How much courage do you have this morning? How much courage do you have? Like, do you believe so deeply that you're willing to go against the grain? You're, you're willing to go against what friends and family may say. Hey, man, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that might be, you know, I don't want to say it, but it might be stupid. Do you have enough, enough courage to live aligned with your beliefs in a way that, by the way, people, other people won't understand? I imagine when Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman made that final move to run, there were people around them going, ah, man, no, you shouldn't do it. Master, he's good. He's good to us. He feeds us. You know, he takes care of us. He gives us Sunday mornings off. You know, you go out and do that, man. You lose your life. I wouldn't do it if I were you. And here we are. Hundreds of years later. Hey, I think I'm going to quit my job. I wouldn't do that right now if I were you. 2020's been a unpredictable year the markets are volatile you know if i were you i would just stay put you got a good job paid you decent money you can pay your bills see what's the thing that you're up against right now it might not be leaving corporate america it could be putting yourself out there telling people who it is that you are and what it is that you intend to do making a powerful declaration that you know when you do, people will say, whoa, 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 now. You know, hey, I, I, I back you, but you don't think that's too much? Where's your courage? See, because in, in order for us to talk about what's next, you got to you, you you be clear on whether or not you have the courage to really, truly believe 
really truly put a stake in the ground and say, yeah, I got the confidence. Really truly act with faith. Oprah, Oprah said, I was raised to believe that excellence is the best deterrent to racism or sexism. And that's how I operate my life. I believe that one of life's greatest risk is never daring to risk. And so many people are playing it safe these days. And because of that, my heart is full, man. When I was working on today's show, I had to take constant breaks, man. Just kind of walk away. My heart would get full. Because I'm like, man, number one, for me, where am I? In this conversation on a personal level. See, because I mean, I'm, I'm reading, I'm putting it together and I'm like, bro, wait, where's your faith lacking? Yeah, you've done some things, but that was yesterday. What is there to do now? Who will you be now? What will you create now? Are you willing to be uncomfortable now in the pursuit of what's next? So many of us. We have yet to begin doing the work we know we were meant to do. Man, that breaks my heart. Like right now you're listening to me and you know there's a work God's put in you. But you've been allowing your fear to control the conversation. You've been allowing fear to negate action. You've been allowing fear to stop the declaration. You can't even say it. You can't even admit that that's what's on your heart. You can't. So many of us right now have yet to begin doing the work. We know, we know you believe it in your spirit, in your soul. You can feel it right now in your gut. You know you were meant to do it. But you haven't moved on it. You've been distracted. You've been distracted by little dopamine hits, artificial goals you've been setting to distract you from your true purpose. And see, here's what happens. When you get distracted from your true purpose, your confidence takes a hit. Because at the very core, purpose creates and defines our personal identity. But see, your personal identity is attached to your purpose. And if you're not living out your purpose, then you don't have identity and no identity. Well, no confidence. No identity, no confidence. You can't be your purpose while you question that purpose. The best way to miss a shot is to doubt you can make the shot before you ever take it. Wayne Gretzky said it a little differently. He said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And my heart is heavy because I believe a lot of people right now are sitting down on their purpose. They're not taking the shot because they've been frozen by fear. They're they're sitting down on their purpose or they're not really activating on purpose because they don't they don't really want to rely on faith. You know, you say you're courageous, but when was the last time you really pushed yourself out into the unknown to create a possibility that you couldn't see? A possibility you can't feel. You just have a vision. When was the last time you did it? I'm not talking about yesterday. I'm talking about right now. Where are you? See, what happens is we, we have these wins. We celebrate them. Then you celebrate the same win for the next 10 years. When you were supposed to level up 10 times. Where's your confidence? Where's your faith? Where's your belief? No faith in your purpose. No identity. No identity, no confidence. No confidence, no belief. When we come back, how do we change that?
Keep listening. My name is Linnell Harris. You've been listening to Inspirational Perspective. I'm your host and life coach. Right here on WBON 1690 AM, the talk of Chicago. We'll be right back. Good morning. Good morning. Where we at? Where am I? <laughs> man. This is one of those topics, man. I'm putting the notes together. I'm like, woo. This is just as much for me. The talk of Chicago. As it is for you. Of the nation. 1690 WBON Berwyn, Chicago. Alright, what questions do you have? Let's look at questions. I'm Vanessa Tyler. And I'm Mike Stevens on the Black Information Network. Release the transcript. As I said before, Release the transcript. put your uh Put your questions in. If you put questions in for me, made it known go ahead and copy and paste them so I can take a look over. at them right now. They want to see what Attorney General Answer some Daniel questions presented to the grand jury or just share your thoughts. I'll start from the bottom. Just repost them. Um, let's see what we got here. You shouldn't have any problem whatsoever, Daniel Cameron, to releasing the transcript. Attorney Ben Crump suspects Cameron presented a slanted view favoring the Louisville Metro Police who burst in killing Taylor in her own home. Crump says he knows the grand jury heard about one... The hour went fast, huh? Yeah, man. ...hearing police identify themselves, but wonders, did the grand jury... Yeah, people do live in the past, brother. Who didn't. Like, okay, you had a win, now what? Man, that's that's been my biggest thing. I've made some tremendous leaps. And... My question is always, okay, what's the next leap? And how am I trying to avoid it, right? I shared with my Slayer Goals member Thursday night how I took a leap five years ago, almost about this time, and how difficult, how scary that leap was. And when I look at where I am now, man, faith, brother, thank God. Thank God, right? But then what's the next leap? See, because it's always uncomfortable. So then what's the next leap? And God knows, man, the way he's caught me on every leap, right? And, 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 and elevates and has elevated my life. Like, I don't want to stop leaping. I don't want to stop leaping because I get comfortable. I get, I get scared. What's the next leap? Like, that's the big question. I was putting this together. I'm like, man, okay, what's the next leap? What's the next leap? Like, you know, what what is it that I'm that I'm supposed to do next that challenges me? That scares me. So I got a family now. How much faith do you have? Right? I mean, these are the questions I was asking myself. I'm reading through these notes. I'm like, man, hey, you know, I ain't just I ain't just throwing punches. You know, before I throw the punch, I'm I'm feeling the impact over here. Whoo! How much faith you got, bro? <laughs> Somebody say they hear the story of Breonna Taylor in the background. Haven't felt good in a couple of days about it. And this is where faith comes in. You know, faith in action. I'm going to talk about that. Faith in action. Faith in action. I'm going to tell, tell you something. I, I guess I wasn't disappointed by the verdict. And the reason why is because I didn't expect anything different. You know, we, we, we've seen how it goes. I didn't expect anything different. I expected a longer fight. I expected a longer fight. It's uh, faith, confidence, and belief. But do we believe we can do it? Do we believe we can take the steps to create long-lasting change? Long-lasting change. All right, I don't see any questions here. It looks like you guys are pretty. You 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 get it. You get it. Faith, confidence, and belief. I'm gonna tell you something. If you're getting something out of out of today's segment, I'm gonna ask you to share the stream. 
its film series with others Thursday, so they can October they can get the same the Vaughn TV premiere of healing me it's a true um, story of one woman maybe the caption is are you truly living to your potential it's the story of if not why who've had to deal with addiction, you know but the criminal justice system and the back and forth of recovery and you look at our true capacity man collectively and individually are we really from are we really there Man, this right here is going to change some things for me, this segment. This is Perry Small. I'm excited to kick off this year's Urban Heritage Film Series. That's a good question. When you talk about hormones and their impacts, how do you explain to people all are not good habits, even if they make you feel good? This is this is where you draw the contrast between where is the thing that makes you feel good getting you? Is it getting you closer to your goal? Or is it in some way just relaxing you and 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 pushing you away from the goal um but that that becomes a big question and that's that's what i would say okay you feel good but how is that taking you where you want to go ultimately like the big game how is that taking you where you want to go and that and that becomes the question and if it's not taking you where you want to go then maybe it's not the right feel good Adrian said, I had to admit to myself that this pandemic had me frozen. I stopped dreaming and planning goals. Now I'm up and working my way back. Beautiful. You have to reignite that flame. Yeah, we can move mountains. We just have to believe we can. We have, we have to believe we can. I, I, I agree with that. We have, we have to believe we can. And then we have to take the action. And, I, and we have a, I mean, we've grown incredibly complacent, I believe. I, I believe we've grown complacent. And there's an opportunity for like real true action. Real true faith-based action is another way to put that. We need to make sure our children have every resource. All right, when we come back, man, uh, more, much more. If we don't know the next leap, how do we take action, or how do we discern it? See, the next leap is typically uh, laid out in your goals. This is why goal setting is so important because when you when you when you when you take a step back, right, and you get present to what you want to create in your life. That's where, I mean, the gap between where you are now and the goal itself, like the only way to get there is faith, faith in action. And so you keep setting goals. Those goals identify the next leap, the next leap. The question is, will you be frozen by fear or will you take action? And we're frozen by fear because we lack the courage to really move, to really act. And that's why I started with courage. So that's that's like what are your goals? There's likely a goal where you the you need to take a leap, and you may be ignoring it. Midway Broadcasting Corporation. And that's another thing that fear does. It is try to push it to the side. All right, we're back. You're listening to Inspirational Perspective with Linnell Harris on 1690, the talk of Chicago. Listening to Inspirational Perspective. 
I'm your host, Linnell Harris, right here on WBON 1690 AM, The Talk of Chicago. Today's topic, why who you, be, who you will be hinges on what you believe. Another way of looking at that is how do we develop our confidence and our belief? Our confidence and our belief in self in particular. If you missed the first part of the show, man, I, I got to tell you, you want to you wanna be sure to get back and check that out. Because what we did is we, we basically built the premise for where we're going to go next. I shared in many ways how as human beings, our, our biology itself is set up to have us act at a high level of faith and belief. But... How our default setting is one of inferiority, and we have a habit of inferiority. And I share how, in working with clients, hundreds of people over the last decade, one of the trends that I've noticed is most of us think lower of ourselves than we should, and it seems to be a default setting. And that, and that setting, in many ways, has us frozen frozen by fear and unable to really take steps and act in faith, right? And, and faith in many ways is, a, is a, a state of being that requires action um, because you can believe, but you're not practicing faith, true faith, until you act. We talked about examples of faith, belief, and confidence like Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman and Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Muhammad Ali and, and others, Dr. Maya, Maya Angelou. And then we began to get in purpose and talk about purpose a bit. You see, because when you when you really begin to, to peel back the onion of this, you know, this type of a conversation around confidence, faith and belief. Many of us, our confidence is eroded because we really don't know why we exist, why we are here. We lack identity, and identity is a tremendous source of confidence, but no identity, no confidence. And so that's what we covered, and now what I want to do is really talk about how do we, with purpose, those of you who know your purpose, know your identity, begin to really walk in new levels of confidence, faith. And belief. Before we do that, I have a phone call. Maurice on line one. Good morning, Maurice. How are you? Maurice still there on line one? One thing. Hello. Hello. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Good morning, okay, brother. Okay. Hey, one God, one people, one bank. You know, those words, brother, I put a case in a nine inch by 12 inch frame. And I put them in your hand a couple of years ago. I remember that. Yeah. At uh, one of your, you were talking about Rwanda, I believe, mm -hmm. at IIT. Mm -hmm. And even at that point, I had faith that uh, God is moving us in that direction, unifying us economically, empowering us. And I still walk that walk, brother. And uh, just as faith without works is dead, the same holds true for prayer without performance. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why the brother said uh, he prayed for 20 years and uh, then he prayed on his legs, huh? Yeah, he received no answer. Frederick Douglass prayed for 20 years, uh -huh. received no answer until he prayed with his legs. You got to walk the walk. And I'm going to let yeah. you go with this, my brother. Our preachers are preaching every Sunday. We're faithful, and that's a fact. But when it comes right down to walking the walk, mm. There's a collective failure to act. Wow. So that's why there's a whole book in the Bible called Acts, Black Man. You got to act on these things. How about that? Great. Thank call. you, Coach. All right, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. This this thing about purpose. Great call, Maurice. And uh, thank you for the 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 little poetry, powerful poetry at the end there. Uh, I I, I want to pose a question. See, because here's the thing about purpose. I always tend to, you know, always push purpose. In many ways, you could say I'm a purpose pusher. 
<laughs> but here's why. I want you to think about something. Everything in God's creation has a purpose. Everything. And the difference between those things outside of us as human beings is they don't get to choose whether they live out that purpose. They're given the unction. They're given the full capacity and ability to do only one thing, and that is fulfill their purpose. But see, what makes us different as human beings, we have choice. We have choice. And so here we are. And even when you look at the predicament of the world, I believe we are where we are because people have not fully aligned with their purpose. And so generation after generation after generation of human beings living beneath and outside their purpose, this is how we get where we are. And then you think about the purpose of the earth and how it has an abundant source and even the situation that our planet is in. And part of that is because as human beings, we haven't truly appreciated the purpose of the blade of grass, the purpose of the weed that grows in the garden, the purpose. And so what we say is, ah, you're a nuisance to me. And we look for ways to destroy it. And as we destroy these things without truly understanding their purpose, we've been destroying ourselves. So think about it this way. What if raindrops could doubt their purpose? What if raindrops could, could, could doubt that they contain the greatness and the power of the ocean? See, if, if a raindrop could shift its purpose, ultimately it would cease to exist. It could not be a raindrop. And when you think about the ocean, the power of the ocean, you know, the waves and how they hit the rocks, the ocean is nothing more than an assortment of a finite number of raindrops. Like, we don't know the number. It seems limitless to us. But it's a finite number of raindrops. And each raindrop has a purpose. And that raindrop drop diligently serves that purpose, making each raindrop powerful powerful and great on its own but even more powerful and great together now if you want to debate that then i challenge you this week don't drink the raindrops stop drinking them don't drink them anymore they don't have a purpose you're wrong linnell like you know they don't have purpose so, so stop drinking them and watch how the absence of their individual power, each little raindrop, the absence of their individual power completely depletes and minimizes your power. So again, what if raindrops could doubt their purpose? Just what if? And what if they could doubt that they contain the greatness and the power of the ocean? How much trouble would we be in? See, we need raindrops to serve their purpose to sustain our lives. So who's in trouble? Because you doubt your purpose. Who's in trouble? Because you don't have the confidence to be powerful. Who's in trouble? Because you lack faith in your individual greatness. Who needs you? Who needs you to take that leap to live your purpose and be your personal greatness on this planet so that they don't become depleted and powerless the same way the raindrop that doubted his purpose will leave us powerless see this is this is the thing man we 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 think this is a while it's a personal conversation, 
It's not. Right now, if I if I, if I on a personal level, I hadn't taken leap after leap after leap, you wouldn't hear the sound of my voice. I, I've shared it before. There was a point where, as a communicator, there's no way they'd give me a radio show. Two hours alone? Without support? As the host? Are you kidding me? Linnell Harris? Nah. Wouldn't have happened. It took it, it, it took these mini leaps. M-I-N-I and M-A-N-Y. Leaps. Of faith and action. And belief and confidence. There was a time when my confidence, man, I didn't have none. I recall, I can recall sitting in a meeting in corporate America, man, and being called on in a, at the last minute to read a data report that I produced. My voice was shaking. My entire body was sweating. And the more my voice shook, the lower my confidence went. And the people were looking at me. And I could tell that the concern in their eyes, will he make it through the report? Man, this is like my life, where I've been. So how does a man like that become a man like this? Faith. And then how does a man like this become a man like that, wherever it is that God has taken me? Faith. Faith. Faith and purpose. My, my wife often reminds me that fear is selfish. And uh, I remember, I don't think we were married when she, she came up with this distinction or shared this distinction with me. But what she said is, she said, you know, fear is selfish because it, it, it keeps us consumed with thoughts of what might happen to us, could happen to us, or potentially hurt us, versus being focused on, if I'm my purpose, what positive change and impact might that have on others? And how would me fulfilling my purpose change the lives of other people if I went after my purpose no matter what? What you have to offer matters. Let me say this again. What you have to offer matters. Knowing your purpose matters. Living your purpose, taking action based in faith, confidence and belief matters because someone else's life hinges on that decision. We're all connected. So when I say this morning, what steps do you need to take to increase your self-confidence? That's not just a question about you. It's what steps do you need to take to save somebody's life? Not just save your own, but someone else is depending on you. You don't know it, but they are. They might be in the womb right now. And they just they need you to step forward with faith, because if you don't, it has a, a powerful impact on their life. They make the wrong turns. They make the wrong decisions because you had no confidence. You lack faith. You didn't believe. And not only did it erode the potential and possibility of your life, it impacted theirs. A lot of folks, they think this spiritual journey is, is just about complete because I'm a good person. I don't hurt anybody. I keep to myself. But sometimes your complacency, your lack of purpose, your lack of faith, your lack of confidence. Oh, I, you know, I, I, I get scared. Your lack of courage is the biggest sin. Because somebody else is depending on you. And your selfishness, your self-focus on how you feel, will create it where they never get what they were supposed to get. Because you were afraid. And you lack the courage. And you kept stopping. And you kept freezing. Because you lack faith. What 
steps do you do you need to take to solidify your faith this morning? See, you can you can choose confidence and faith as the modes which you operate from this day forward. It's just a, it's a decision. Everything I've talked about over the last eight weeks, decisions, decisions. Will I be disciplined? Will I create a new level of self-motivation? Will I create a vision for my life? See, because here's the thing. You're creating a vision for your life, but it's not just for your life. It's for your impact. It's for your impact. Let me tell you something, man. My business changed when I stopped measuring revenue and started measuring impact. Like everything shifted. You know, because, you know, in business, you, you, you measure revenue, right? Been measuring revenue ever since I came out of corporate America. That's how I learned it. What's the revenue? Okay, here's the revenue goal for 2018. Here's the revenue goal for 2019. Then all of a sudden, it was like, why am I not? Why does that not turn me on? Why am I not? Why am I not motivated by that? That's when I realized, man, it's not about revenue. It's about impact. It's about impact. The more impact. I can have the more lives I can change that's what I'm counting because my life's about purpose not money here's a crazy thing I shifted I shift the focus to impact revenue took care of itself what impact will you make see here's 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 the tough part life is about constantly finding ourselves and transforming in the person into the person we found. So I don't care who you are and what you achieved yesterday. There's an opportunity to find yourself again and then move to the next level. But all too often, man, we get stuck. Why? Because life on the individual level is good. I live nice. I drive nice. I eat good. We can tell you eat good. Everything's good. What am I worried about? Why would I make myself uncomfortable? Selfish. See, because all this is not just about fear. Some of it is, I just, you know, I don't want to rock my own boat. You know, I, I get out here and I start doing things that can make me uncomfortable. But what about the rest of us? What about my son? What about that unborn child whose, life's, whose life you would have a tremendous impact on if you just kept finding yourself and kept transforming? See, part of our purpose is to transform. I'm always asking myself, I'm always asking my clients, what's the next level? What's the next step? Not from a place of ego, but from a place of pure transformation. So I can have the impact God would intend for me to have. We need you. See, I'm talking to somebody this morning like it's they're, they're uncomfortable with this whole conversation because they know. We need you. We need you. The world needs you. There's a forest in the acorn. What's in you? What's in you? Are you? Are you living to your highest potential? And if not, where's your faith? Where's your faith? All right, so you might like, well, Linnell, what's what is faith? What is faith? You keep saying, where's my faith? What is faith? Let's 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 break that down. Faith is a strong belief. A deep confidence or trust in someone or something. So let me let me break this down another way. Faith is a strong belief, a deep confidence, or trust in yourself, God the Creator, in a vision that you have for your life. See, because He put that vision in you. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to run after that for a reason, folks. If I said I have faith in myself to deliver on a commitment, what I'm essentially saying 
is that I have a strong belief and deep confidence that I can trust myself to deliver on that commitment. So faith essentially is believing that you can deliver on a commitment because you said you would. That's what faith is. Here's a faith formula. I put this in my book, Lessons to Teach My Son. It'll be coming out soon. It's just about done. Faith equals deep belief plus purposeful action. Let me say it again. Three parts. Faith equals deep belief plus purposeful action. You can't, you can't have just belief and call it faith. And that's, that's one of the biggest misconceptions I've seen. And this is why so many people lack power. A lot of folks got belief. Oh, I believe. Every Sunday, hands up. Eyes closed. Believe and believe and believe and believe and believe and believe and believe it. No action. No action. They walk out. Do the same thing they did last week. And then sometimes towards the end of the week, they wonder, why hasn't anything changed? I believe. I believe. Why hasn't anything changed for me? Why hasn't anything changed for my community? Why hasn't anything changed for the people around me? Because faith is not just deep belief, but it's purposeful, purposeful action based on the commitment from that belief. That's where the leap is. I've grown up in an environment where a lot of people talk about faith, but they don't necessarily have it. They have belief, but they don't have the full definition of faith because there's very little action. And, and what I've observed is that we relate to faith a lot like we relate to money. And I, and I wanna break this down for you guys, so stick with me. When you think about money, this is how we typically think about money, one of two ways. I'm gonna use examples for this. We might say to ourselves, this is example number one. When I start making more money, I'm going to get a new car. Now keep in mind, this is, is, an, is an example, okay? When I start to make more money, I'm going to get a new car. Now, that's the first statement. Now here's the second statement. I can't afford to make these mortgage payments if my taxes go up, so I'm going to lose my house. That's the second statement. All right, now let's, let's, let's like just walk with me here as we dissect these statements, because by the way, these are things that we've heard, these are circumstances many of us have lived, okay? These are things that some of us have said. And, and this is how we get, in many ways, faith all messed up, because, you know, we start making more money and we get the car and we said, ooh, look at, look at your faith delivered. That wasn't faith. That wasn't faith. And so we, we, we think sometimes we're acting with faith, but it's not faith. Let me, let me explain. Notice that statement number one, when I start making more money, I'm going to get a new car. Let's think about that statement. Statement number one, notice that it, it's really a, if this, then that statement, okay? That's all it is. If this, then that statements are well known by computers and programmers and coders. We call this logic, right? Coders call that programming logic. So this type of statement serves as a way to provide stability and predictability for the order of a program. Now, I want you to think about this another way. When you turn on a computer, there's no need for faith. Simply pressing the button will turn on the computer. Now, catch this. If the computer doesn't turn on, then there's a, if this, then that statement that must be satisfied. For example, you'll probably check to see if the computer's plugged up or if it's charged. If this, then that. Right? Ain't, ain't, ain't that many of y'all praying over the computer now? Let's be real. <laughs> oh, it didn't turn on. Okay. Hey, ah, you know, you, you say your prayer. Then you hit it again. Y'all not doing that. 
Y'all taking logical steps. If this, then that. Now, if you somebody it happened to you, you didn't have electricity, and you prayed up the computer and it and it and it, it started working, hey, that's face. That's a whole different type of thing. Okay? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> but how many people has that happened to? Not y'all. Okay? Okay. So there's no need or use for faith when you're playing it safe. Let me say that again. There's no need or use for faith when you're playing it safe. And you've got it all figured out. Because looking at life like this, what happens is if you look at your entire life this way, what it will do over time is it will erode your personal power and your possibility and ultimately your faith. Why do you say that, Linnell? Because when you go back to statement number one, when I start making more money, I'm going to get a new car. Really what you're saying is that I need to see the money first, right? And then once I see the money, then I will go purchase a car because I know I have the money to sustain the payment for the car. There is no big leap. There's no active faith in that. It's just nothing more than logical steps that we've seen many other people take, it's a process. And see, we get it mixed up. We start celebrating these things. And by the way, buying a new car, that's awesome. But we start celebrating these things as, act, as acts of faith and belief. And it's like, nah, that's, you know, you've been pretty much programmed to follow that, that logic. It's, it's the logical steps. You made more money, you bought a new car. Okay. Where's the faith in that? Now, let's go back to the second statement. I can't afford to make these mortgage payments. If my taxes go up, I'll lose my house. The difference between statement one and this second statement I just read is that one immediately eradicates faith. Wow. Like the one I just said, right? Let me be clear. I can't afford these mortgage payments. If my taxes go up, I may lose my house. That one completely eradicates faith. That statement eradicates faith. While the other one, when I begin making more money, I'll purchase a new car. That erodes faith over time. And what's happened is, I believe that one of two things is happening in most of our lives. We're eradicating faith with our statements. And what do you mean by that? Anytime you say, I can't. Anytime you say, I can't, as a creator, you are eradicating your creative ability. Anytime you say it. Henry Ford, he wasn't a preacher. Henry Ford, he wasn't a motivational speaker. Henry Ford, he wasn't. He wasn't any of those things. He was a car manufacturer. And even he got that whether you can or you can't, you're right. He said that. So when you say you can't, you eradicate faith completely. There's no faith in that statement. And, and faith is nothing more than trusting that you can. And that you will despite circumstance. That's what faith is. Trusting by believing that you can and then taking the ac actions to create, as so, create it as so, despite circumstance. See, let's, let's go back to the person who, who's losing their house and they say, well, you know, I, if, if my taxes go up, I won't be able to pay the mortgage, which means I'll lose my house. See, a person with faith would say, oh, they're raising my taxes, but... Either way, I'm going to keep my house. And then they start taking action. They might start calling the Cook County Tax Assessor's Office or whatever county they live in. They might start reading up on information, but they start taking action because they believe they're going to keep the house. And they also know that faith requires action. Faith is nothing more than trusting that you can and that you will despite circumstance. Now, 
let me give you a different example because I know people are probably mulling over this one and, and, and looking for, and have, you know maybe their points of contention with this one but maybe not and so let, let me put it another way God forbid but if any of us were diagnosed with terminal cancer and we accepted this information and consequently determined that we couldn't live past the end of the year whether the diagnosis was correct or erroneous there's a good chance we would die by the end of the year now let's think about that doesn't matter if the diagnosis was correct or erroneous so that means that I'm healthy in great health a doctor tells me hey it, it appears you have terminal cancer and you won't make it out of 2020 Linnell. if I accept that healthy body healthy form if I accept that if I begin to believe that and act accordingly even now as healthy as I am I likely wouldn't make it out of the end of the year now, do you all agree with that? See, because if you agree with that, then you have to agree the other way. See, because this is the power of belief. This is the power that we have inside of us. So what if we did it the other way around? Here's the interesting piece. Most of us wouldn't accept that diagnosis. Most of us. Most of you all listening right now, you wouldn't accept that diagnosis. Partly. Because we don't understand how cancer works and that would work in our benefit because we're somewhat ignorant of it. And see, here's the thing, man. I, I, I firmly believe that sometimes ignorance is a powerful, beautiful quality when it comes to faith. Because if we really knew, like if I really knew what it took to be an entrepreneur before I left corporate America, if I really knew, if I, you know, man, that would have made the leap so much harder. You know, think about Frederick Douglass. If he really knew and Harry, Harriet Tubman, they really knew how many people were on those roads just exactly how many men were on those roads with dogs looking for them just the, the full number would they have run see one of the problems we have is when it comes to faith instead of acting with faith we feel like we got to know how and we got to know what we got to know everything and that gets in the way of our ability to push forward but we get diagnosed with cancer because we don't necessarily, I'm not a doctor, I don't necessarily, I mean, I have an idea of how cancer works, but I don't know, right? All the way, not like a doc doctor would. Doctor's probably listening saying, oh, I know exactly how it would work. Well, guess what? They get it, they're in trouble because they know how it works. I don't know how it works. So I would say, well, I, I'm not accepting that. Most of us would say, I'm not accepting that. Partly because we just want to live. And we believe that we deserve to live. And so we would push this belief into our bodies, into our spirit, into our soul, that I'm going to live, despite how this cancer makes me feel. And the combination of our scientific ignorance and will to live will provide us the faith to exist. Many people live past the diagnosed time frames that they're given because of their faith. Hey, this is, this is true, you can look at the data because of their faith and then get this here's the difference see because if you get a if you get a diagnosis like that more than likely you tell your friends and family and your friends and family will fuel your faith with affirmations and prayer they would be praying and affirming you you got this you got this and it's likely that if we did have this this terminal cancer we could outlive the original timeline with all those prayers and affirmations and friends and 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 people around us, we outlive it. Some of us could actually beat it. Now you might say, well, Linnell, why are you using such a drastic circumstance? Well, I use it because when I, when I made the statement in, in number two, statement number two, it's not that drastic, right? We think of this as real life. Like if, if my mortgage goes up because of my property taxes, I'm going to lose my house, right? So that statement itself, we say, well, well, that's, I mean, I, I, I get that. But see, here's the difference for why many of us can't overcome those type of situations, simple situations of faith. Number one, we don't tell anybody. We don't tell our family and friends that because our ego, our pride. So nobody's praying for us. 
Nobody's affirming us. Nobody's helping us push with our faith. And so as a result, you know, we get put out the house. People, what happened? What happened? Because we, we try to fight a lot of these battles individually versus with a team. And, 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 and by the way, notice how interesting it is that often our pride will supersede our faith. Our pride, right? Like, you know, it, it, you know, some of us right now, you say, oh, well, Linnell, I got faith. How much faith do you have? You have so much faith that in the face of something insurmountable, you would put it on blast. You would tell people around you, like, I need for you to trust with me. I need for you to believe with me right now. Or would you be like, well, that's embarrassing. I don't want everybody to know about that. So, you know, I'm going to keep that to myself and hopefully it works out. And then here's the thing. Unfortunately, your faith issue doesn't end there because your beliefs are a barrier, too. So, it, so then if you don't believe that you can overcome it, you won't. And, and this is the thing about knowledge because, see, they, you know, they say knowledge is grievous. Why is knowledge grievous? Because sometimes we're too smart for our own good. You know so much, so you believe very little. Because if you don't know it, you don't believe it. And everything you believe, you got to know it. So then before you believe it, you got to know it. Versus just stepping back and saying, I trust, I got this. God's got this. This is the direction I'm supposed to go. I know it. Now, I, I'm not telling you to leap without a, a full plan. Did I have a business plan? Yeah, I did, but it didn't matter. Whole business plan fell apart after I leaped. <laughs> you know, like my leap was one of those leaps where you, you leap and you think you're going to land on your feet and then you hit the ground and it crumbles underneath you and you roll and you get dirty and you're like, woo, you know, and you finally get up. You don't know when you're going to get up, but you finally get up and you have to dust yourself off and you say, wow, that was something. But then you're still happy you left. I'm still happy I took the leap. I'm still happy I took the leap. Faith is believing the possibility without knowing how it will manifest. And, and, and this is the thing, right? Because what I'm talking about in terms of faith, like the, the greats, they write about it. Motiva motivational speakers have written about it. Scientists have written about it. Dr. Maxwell Maltz has a book called Psycho-Cybernetics. And one of the things he talks about in the books is how trying to figure out the how is the one thing that will keep you away from the goal. He refers to Brian Tracy in the book who says that pushing too much effort into thinking of how something will be done often gets in the way of our ability to achieve the goal. So even in the science of goal setting, and from a humanistic quality, they say, hey, don't worry about how, just take the faith leap. Even they say it. So faith is believing the possibility without knowing how it will manifest. Some of us are so worried about how. I get it. I, I get worried about how too. And this is much harder than we know because the rules, they say you're supposed to know how. Everybody's trying to teach us how. And it's easy to believe in what we've actually seen or been taught and told than what we believe can manifest. So what, what do we do? Dr. Martin Luther King provides us a great example of what faith looks like while having knowledge. What do I mean by that? Well, Dr. King was not an ignorant man. He was well-educated and fully aware of the civil liberties that African Americans were not provided in the United States of America. And he also understood how monumental any shift in those liberties would be. So when you think about the civil rights movement of the 1950s and the 1960s, like if you really think about it, that was not a sensible and logical movement. And see, I, I believe that's what's getting in our way now because we're, we're trying to make sense of everything. 
We're, we're, we're trying to make sense. We're trying to be logical about it. The civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s was not a sensible and logical movement, folks. You don't, you, you, you don't march when you know people don't care about your life and they, they would kill you on television. They don't care. Like, that's not logical. It's not sensible. I mean, it's one of the reasons we celebrate the great brother John Lewis. It was a faith movement. That movement was a faith movement. Right now, we're talking about voting and the things that our ancestors did to secure the right to vote. That was a faith movement. They didn't know how. It was a faith movement. Dr. King said faith is taking the first step even when you can't see the whole staircase. Big leaps. And I believe this morning we live in an age of information. And all too often we get distracted by what makes sense. Otherwise known as if this then that we get caught in our logic and all too often we get discouraged by what we think we know see faith isn't about what makes sense it's not about what makes sense nor is it about what we think we know faith is about unwavering belief in a possibility and taking action aligned with that belief consistently despite the implications of the immediate outcome. Doesn't matter. See, we live in this feel-good society now, so we take, a, we take a faith leap. We don't land on our feet and we say, oh, that was the wrong decision. No, doesn't matter. Faith is about unwavering belief in a possibility and taking actions aligned with that belief consistently despite the implications of the immediate outcome. Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I can't think of a better statement. The conviction, the conviction of things not seen. Every big leap I've ever made in my life that's based on faith. Because there's a conviction. There was a conviction under it. And this is why I asked the question at the beginning of the show. Like, what conviction, like what beliefs do you have that are convictions? See, because when you, when you begin to get underneath that, then that's where you act. You want to know how to begin practicing faith? That's where you begin practicing faith. The question was, what are your soul convicting values and beliefs? What are your soul convicting? And if you don't have them, man, you're in trouble. You might want to start working right there. But what are your soul convicting values and beliefs? Do you have them written down? Because that's where you begin to act. That's where we begin to, to take the leap. Faith. Is about acting on conviction despite what you see. Now, here's the other thing faith is fueled by love, not fear. So when you need fuel for your faith, it comes from love. This is why Dr. King talked about love so much. He knew. He's like, look, man can't create anything from fear he said love them don't make sense does it but it fuels faith it fuels faith and that's the thing about faith because when you combine faith with love people will ridicule it, it becomes misunderstood it's not popular it's not popular because if it were we see more miracles we see more movement So the question this morning, where is your faith? Where is your faith on a scale of one to 10? 
I was asking myself this question last night. Hey, Linnell, where's your faith? Scale of one to 10, everything that's going on in the world right now. The current circumstance of our community, where's your faith? There's a part of me that just wants to run. Man, take my family. We can move to another country and just start, oh, I got a son. But then the question here is, where's your faith? Where's your faith? Where's your faith? On a scale of one to 10, where's your faith? And no matter where it is, how can you start nourishing your faith today? Where are you? Are you caught in logic? Are you a if this, then that person? And that's what makes faith so difficult for you, belief so difficult for you, stepping out with confidence so difficult for you. Is that the barrier that you have to overcome? Maybe you've eradicated faith in your life. You've been told by others what you can't do. You've even told yourself what you can't do. And at a minimum today, coming out this conversation, there's an opportunity for you just to change your language. You can. You can. Many, many of us, we're plagued by doubt. Doubt is uncertainty. Doubt is a lack of conviction. Doubt is fear. And if you notice, if you notice doubt is pushing you, then what will you do? Who will you be? Doubt is like having a thief in your home. And when it comes time to make eggs for breakfast, you thought you had enough, but you don't. Doubt stole them. Doubt, what it does, you go to the store, you thought you had a $20 bill, but you don't. Doubt is like that thief in your home. It took it. You can't buy anything. And this is how doubt works in our life with our goals. This morning you want to be successful. You want to understand you better. Then you have to understand and know your limiting beliefs. You got to get better acquainted with your doubt. Where's your doubt showing up? And then the first step to increasing your faith is you start to extinguish your doubt. You got to put it out like it's a fire that's about to burn out your burn down your house. Get rid of it. Now, I'm going to leave you guys with this. I, I, I get emails all the time, people asking about time management and productivity. You might say, well, Linnell, what does that have to do with a conversation about confidence, faith, and belief? Let me tell you. Poor productivity is typically a, a product of fear. You might say, oh, well, Linnell, it's lack of motivation. No, it's fear. And see, what happens is when you're scared, you get sloppy mechanics. Your sloppy mechanics are sourced by a lack of confidence. What I mean by sloppy mechanics, you don't track your time, you're not paying attention. And you're not entering things with the confidence you should enter it with. You want more productivity, you want more time management, increase your faith. Enter things with confidence. See, when you feel better about yourself, you perform better. Mechanics have everything to do with your confidence. Your self-talk, that's sourced by your confidence. Many of you, you need, to, you need to take your confidence to a new level just by talking to yourself. I can do it. I, can do it. I was having a conversation with my mom. She started saying these affirmations and she's seeing a difference in her life already. Confidence, like just pouring. I, I shared before, a friend of mine called me. I was at the airport. What you doing? I said, I'm just talking to myself. He said, what are you saying? I, I'm saying I am great. I am powerful. I can do anything I put my mind to. Sourcing myself, sourcing my confidence. This is the work. This is the work. It's time that we begin to exercise the muscles of our confidence, the muscles of our faith, and the muscles of, of our belief. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter the color of your skin, no matter your gender, we all have a piece of God, and that makes us great. And it's time 
it's time we get to our greatness. Don't limit yourself this morning. There'll be enough people trying to place limits on you. Make sure it's not the person in the mirror. Fuel your faith. Believe that you can. Because I know you will. God bless you this morning. Thanks for listening. My name is Linnell Harris, your host and life coach. Man, may we have more faith. May we all have more belief. And may we all have more confidence. That's my prayer for you. Have a phenomenal Sunday. And a confident, powerful faith week. Until next week, have a phenomenal Sunday. I got work to do. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> the talk of Chicago. I, I got and work the to voice do. Of the nation. It's a whole nother level. A whole nother level. Y'all have a good Sunday. I love you guys. Share, share the stream.